Right, question two. And we've got the time it takes for a web page to load is one measure used to determine a website's performance. A recent study found that 46% of users do not revisit poorly performing websites. So 12 people visit a poorly performing website. We know that 46% of users don't revisit. Using an appropriate probability distribution model, calculate an estimate for the probability that no more than half of these people do not revisit the website. So this is looking to me like a binomial distribution, since we can turn the, the thing that we're looking for into success and failure, and the chance of um, that being 46%. So again, I like to summarize these. So XOR followed by an annual distribution. We've got 12 people visiting and we're looking at the chances that they do not revisit. So 46% don't revisit. And we want to find the probability that no more than half of these don't revisit. So half is at six. And we want no more than half. So we can go everything up to and including six, but not over six. So our probability X is less than or equal to six. So hop on over to the calculator. We're going to go to our stats menu and we are in distributions and binomial. And I'm going to go for a cumulative up to and including. I won't do the list option this way. I'll just show you another one. So I'll change that to variable where we're just doing it for one thing. So X is six. Our number of trials is 12. And the probability is 0.46. And if we execute, we get a probability is 0.7157. Part two was give two reasons why you selected that probability distribution. So why did we pick binomial? And binomial is always all about fist. So we can say there are a fixed number of trials and that there were um, two outcomes that could be termed as success and failure. So there's my write-up of two possibilities. You can probably do more. And we'll take a look at the schedule. There's the correct probability that we've got there. You get a U mark for that. And then here's four possible things we could have stated um, to do with those fixed, uh, the FIST abbreviation for binomial. Get those right along with the correct probability and you've got yourself a mark towards merit. Okay, so next part, you can just pause the video and have a read of this. I won't read it out to you. This one takes a little bit to wrap your head around. I'm going to go to this bit at the end of what are we aiming for. So we want the probability that at least one of these 20 visitors, no matter which one they went to, um, does not revisit the website. So that's the probability. If we're saying X is the number of people that don't revisit, that we get at least one person that doesn't revisit. So that's going to be one minus the probability that X equals zero. So we want to know what's the chance of them not revisiting no matter which version they went to. So this X that we're talking about is any of the visitors um, from either visiting version A or version B. So we need to work out the probability of getting none revisiting from A and none revisiting from B. And that will give us this bit of um, X equals zero. So nobody revisits no matter what. And then we'll be able to take it away from one. So let's think about A. So A is a binomial distribution and um, 10 people get directed there. So we've got 10 trials on A and the chance of them not revisiting is 0.2. For B, it's another individual binomial. There's 10 people going there and the chance of them not revisiting is 0.45. We want to work out the probability of getting none on A and the probability of getting none on B. That um, So none that did not revisit the website. So we go over to our stats menu. And I've gone over and put in the details for binomial at a point um, x equals 0, number of trials 10, probability 0.10. Uh, sorry, 0.2. So now our probability is 0.1074. And if we go and do the same for B, we just need to change our probability to 0.45. And we get the probability of none on B will be 0 0.00253.
So then we want the probability that x equals 0 on both a and b. So none from a and none from b means we are going to multiply them together. And then take that answer and use it down here as our total for getting none on either one of those distributions. So take it away from 1 to get 0.9997. That was a pretty tricky question. We'll go look at the answers here. We've got them working through the same things that I've just shown you. Um, then we've got one of those probabilities correct um, gets you a u correct probabilities for x equals 0, so the total being 0 by multiplying a and b together. Um, correct probability calculated for greater than or equal to 1 by subtracting that from 1. Oh, and I forgot the last bit of that question. So let's just go back and do that. So here's a lesson in making sure you have answered the question at the end. Just check that you've done that. So this last bit here, discuss why independence can be assumed in this situation. So A and B should be independent of each other because they were randomly assigned at the beginning um, which version they got sent to. And here we've got that's what's needed for the excellence. Um, something about assuming um, the independence uh, in reference to you know, the, the context of the question. OK, just pause the video to have a read through this question. So we've got 365 days in total. These numbers here add up to 365. Um, number of page views that happen on each of those days. And we've got to count here. So um, we want to know how many days were between 75 and 225. So that comes to 290. 290 out of 300, oops, 365. comes to 79.45%, so not 95% of the days. Then we want to figure out where the central 95% could be. So we want to find where's the top 2.5% and the bottom 2.5%, and then the central 95% would be inside of those two sections. So if we start with this section at the bottom end here, 45 out of 365 makes 12.5%. So this, this little rectangle is worth 12.5%. And we want to just like chop off a little bit of it that will be 2.5%. Well, 2.5 out of 12.5, that's 5 that's a fifth. If you divide 12.5 by 5, you'll get 2.5. So if we take this width here and we want to just chop off um, one fifth of it, we can divide that width, width by five, right? So this width from uh, the beginning is 25 up to 75. So that's a distance of 50, right? We want to divide that by five. So um, 50 over five is 10. So if we go 10 in from the beginning of our graph, we will have chopped off the beginning 25%. So that it, that graph starts at 25, 25 plus 10 equals 35 for the lower limit. We'll go and do a similar thing at the top end. So 30 days out of 365 gives us a percentage of 8.2. So this whole block is worth 8.2 and we want to slice off 2.5% of 8.2. So if we think in proportions again, 2.5 out of 8.2 is roughly 0.3 of that block. So that block goes from 225 up to 275, again a distance of 50, and we want to go um, 0.3 from the end inwards from, from the top of that. So if we do 50 times by 0.3, we get 15. So then if we do the top of our block is 275, take off that 15, because 50 times 0.3 equals 15. Take off that 15, we get 260 as the upper limit. And that's how we can get to that 35 and 260. Let's just check if they wanted anything else. So you can draw on the graph, you definitely should, above to help you with your calculations to show the thinking that you've done there to get those numbers.
So let's take a look at the mark scheme. And you've got um, showing that we've got 79.5 and not 95% just here. For the lower limit, um, it's that working through that I just showed you. I think they've worded it slightly differently, but doing the same sort of thing. So if you correctly show the owner was wrong or an attempt on those limits, then you get a U um, and then variations through to the, the excellence. You can pause and have a read of that. So then the next bit says we're going to use a triangular distribution to model what we just saw, which was that the page views goes from 25 up to um, 225 with a mode at 150. So if we do that as a triangle, 25 up to 275, mode at 150, like so. So A is 25, B is 275, oops. Um, C is 150, and then we need the um, the height of the triangle, which is 2 over B minus A. So height is 2 over 275 minus 25, so 2 over 250. Not 0 0.008. So we can make that 0 0.008, and we'll just check I've got that right. Yep. Okay, so triangular distribution set up. Now let's move on to the next bit. So explain whether continuity correction needs to be used. Just pause and have a think about this question first. So we are specifically being asked to work out the probability if X receives more than 150 page views, does it need a continuity correction? So 150 is going from something countable. So it's counting how many page views. And the model that we have just set up, the triangular one, is a continuous one. So usually when you go from discrete to continuous, you do need to apply a continuity correction. So we'll write that in first. So something like this. But then support your answer with calculations, okay, comparing with or without a continuity correction. So if we do the probability that x is greater than 150 without the continuity correction, we would just be doing half base times height, so half times that 150 gap there up to 275, so that's 125 times 0 0.008, which comes to, uh, so we'll do one. Okay, so that would come to 0.5, obviously, because it was symmetrical. But if we do with the continuity correction, we want to go more than 150. So 150 is not included. It has to be more than 150, and we need to go 0 0.5. We're going to go to the right of 150 because we need to chop that off at 150.5 so that 150 does not get included when we do our little triangle. So now we can work out the area of that triangle. So the base here will be, um, instead of it being 125, it's going to be 124.5. And the height will then be 0 0.007968, which you can either do by similar triangles, which you can see my working out for here, or you can use the formula on your formula sheet for heights on a triangular distribution. Okay, so switching back to working this out, we will do half times 124.5 times 0 0.007968, and that comes to 0 0.496. So you can also argue the other way that it makes very little difference. Um, if we were rounding to whole percentages, for example, both of those would come out to 50%. But if you wanted something with a bit more accuracy, um, then you'd have to say that your continuity correction does make a difference. You can also say that because since we were working with estimates anyway and using a model, then it doesn't really matter about that small difference. And here is the mark scheme for you to take a look at how that got marked.